Matt Biondi is 19 years old, a University of California junior from Moraga, California. This swim meet, which takes place over a five-day period, has already been a spectacular one for Biondi. It began Tuesday evening with the final of the 100-meter freestyle. In morning preliminaries, Biondi had a race, a world record with Olympic gold medalist Rowdy Gaines that held for four years. But that was but a preview of his breathtaking swim in the final, when he became the first man in history to swim 100 meters in less than 49 seconds. Quite an accomplishment for anyone. But to insiders in this sport, a feat made more remarkable by the fact it came in only Biondi's third year of serious swimming. Before the Olympic summer of 1984, he had never trained for any significant length of time in a long course pool. But it's by no means a surprise to find a young man of Biondi's background excelling in water sports. 19 years of growing up in the Bay Area suburb of Moraga have given Matt the territorial privileges of Northern California. Strong winds, blue water, and the chance to stretch his legs a bit. The result is a healthy friendliness and a six foot six inch frame which moves him through the water quite literally in the manner of a big fish. I, I love the water and it's just real peaceful for me to be out there. I've always loved the water as a little kid from taking a bath to going down to the local reservoir just to sail a little sailboat or feed the ducks or something like that. The water has always been something that's excited me and I feel very comfortable around it and in it and under it or wherever. Um, and sailing provides, you know, the perfect escape for me, for my interest, and, you know, I love spending time with my dad and my family when we all go out together. I've always loved dolphins. I've always admired the way they're um, hydrodynamically efficient in the water. Every time I think about moving through the water, that's exactly what I think of, a smooth, efficient motion with dolphins and, and uh, you know, sea mammals, the way they do, even otters or seals. It just, I just marvel at it and just would hope, I'm envious, that, that, um, that someday maybe I'll be able to move like that. Even before his gold medal freestyle relay leg at Los Angeles, Biondi built a national reputation for himself as a water polo player, playing on two national championship teams at the University of California and twice being chosen All-America. I swim for a while, like um, eight months or you know, my college season and into the summer. And when it's time to go back to school, I can't wait to play water polo. I mean, to see, play with all the guys again and hear how they're doing all summer long. And I'm really excited to get back in and, and start it up again. And then after I play for three, three or four months, then I feel it's time to get back into swimming. And when I do get back, when I pull my articles off the wall and put them on my head, I'm just so excited to start swimming again. And I think that's a unique attitude that I have. A lot of guys who are in swimming now don't have the opportunity to do something else three months out of the year. And so when I do come back, I'm really fresh and, and uh, focused on what I want to do. Now the story continues. 24 hours after breaking the world record in the 100-meter freestyle, Biondi came back to win the 200-meter freestyle in American record time. Now he will bid to become the first swimmer ever to win the 50, 100, and 200-meter freestyles at these long course championships. He is the favorite swimming in lane four. Next to him in lane five is the man who beat him at 50 yards in the NCAA championships this year, 20-year-old UCLA senior Tom Jager. It will be fast to watch them swim together. Jager has a much faster stroke turnover than Biondi. The rest of the field, Asa Lawrence, lane one, John, Scott McAdam, lane two, meter, John Sourland, lane three, Tom Williams, lane six, Jim Bourne, lane seven, and Mike Newhoffel in lane eight. Unlike short course swimming, where Jager has a chance to make a turn, he won't have it in this 50-meter long course one straight away. And Matt Biondi would have the nudge, I would say, or the slight advantage over Jager. It was on the turn that Jager was able to beat Biondi in the NCAA. Right now, they're just about dead, even as they come down to the wall ahead of the field. If anything, Jager has a slight edge, but Biondi's reach could be the difference. It was not. Tom Jager beats Matt Biondi by eight one-hundredths of a second. They are off of the world best time by only 11 one-hundredths of a second. The world best having been held by Dino Halsall of Switzerland. And that time, it looked as though Biondi's six-foot, six-inch frame was a disadvantage against the quicker Jager. Well, I think Jager got off to a better start, and I think that's what actually won the race, that eight one-hundredths advantage of the start. And when it came down to the final last meters, and you'll be able to see this on your screen in just a moment, 
Jager had the slight advantage because he had the stroke advantage coming into the wall. He had his timing down just a little bit better. There you can see just above Jager, Jager swimming there in the middle of the pool and Biondi just above him in lane number four. Jager definitely had the lead, much more of an advantage with about five meters to go as they got into the blue lane lines. Biondi made his move, but just a little bit too late, and it came down to the final stroke. There you can see Jager stroking right in, just eight one hundredths of a second. If you look at it, the camera and the finish, it almost looked like a tie. Eight one hundredths of a second translates to about the length of a hand with perhaps part of the wrist added. That is the margin by which Tom Jager beat Matt Biondi. Third place in the race went to the man in lane three, John Sauerland, also of U. UCLA, like Jake. Quickly now, another look back, this time at the start of the race, where it appeared, Mark Spitz, that Biondi may have made a mistake. Well, Jim, on this great isolated view of Matt starting the race, he's got a tremendous amount of thrust on his legs. When he hits the water, he's going to arc his body. But he did the arc a little bit too acutely, and he popped up and got some air underneath his chest, just like an airplane taking off from an airport. And that probably cost him the eight one-hundredths of a second that was necessary to win the race against Tom Jager swimming right next to him. Now let's go down to poolside with Matt Biondi and Donna Deverona. Thank you, Mark. Matt, could you take me through your start? It, it seemed, uh, according to Mark, that you had a little trouble there. Well, I've, um, I definitely had a little trouble in my start. It, it wasn't the best start I've ever had. Um, I've been working on uh, trying to improve my start and turn. Fortunately, uh, 50 meters, there's no turn, so I was really hoping that this would um, turn out a little better than it did. But um, as far as my start goes, I'll just have to keep working on it and, and try to improve on the start every time. So you learned something from this competition. How important was it for you to win all three? Well, um, it was very important. I had been leaning towards it as a goal for a long time. And uh, I think you can group those three, 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 three freestyles together, the 50, the 100, and the 200. And I was really looking to capture all three just because they would signify the fastest freestyler. Um, you know, I didn't get it. Um, but I'd, it'd still be a goal of mine, and I'll try to work to get it next time. Matt Biondi will be back to try again later in the 100-meter butterfly race. Coming up next, a look at the premier backstroker in the world, Rick Carey.